Please have a seat, everyone. It is a joy to be with you today, as it always is, every Sunday. And we are now in part two of our sermon series called Questions of the Faith. Today's question is obvious. It comes right out of each of the readings for today. And the question appears on your monitor today. Are there angels in our midst? That's the question. Did you know that people are divided on this question? Some people say that angels exist. Others people's, other people say angels do not exist. Or some theologians say angels exist, but only in the heavenly kingdom, not here on earth. And others argue, no, there are angels here on earth. But the whole question is, we need to ask ourselves, are there angels, who are they, and what do they do? Well, I think the question is quite definitively answered from the words of Scripture. Are there angels? The answer is absolutely yes. This is true according to the Scriptures. And how do we know? In the Holy Scriptures, there are 296 stories about angels walking the face of this earth. Isn't that amazing? 296 narratives about angels alive, well, interfacing with people, right here on earth. And the Bible is quite clear that angels do exist. But we need to ask ourselves, what exactly are they doing? What is their purpose right now? Well, we go back into the Bible and you look at the New Testament. The New Testament was written in the language of Greek. Now look up on the monitor, if you will. And on the monitor is a squiggly word at the top. That's a Greek word designating angels. The Greek word is agalos, agalos, and the Greek word literally means messenger, one who delivers messages from God. So if you look at all the different roles assigned to the angel, there is one, one primary role as messenger of God. Now, as I mentioned briefly to the children, in the scriptures, angels deliver messages to human beings. The most famous example is when the angel appeared to Mary one day. And the angel said to Mary, Mary, you are favored among all women in the, in the universe. You will give birth to the Messiah and you shall name him Jesus. There was an angel who appeared to Mary to deliver that message. And then as I mentioned to the children at the children's sermon, there was a whole company of angels the night Jesus was born. The scriptures remind us that when Jesus was born, the angels appeared in the nighttime sky to deliver a message to the shepherds. Christ the Savior is born. And not only did they deliver a message, it was a singing telegram. Christ the Savior is born. For unto you is born in the city of David a Savior who is Jesus the Christ. Again, Angels are messengers. They deliver news from God. How about another famous example of angels delivering messages? How about Easter morning itself? The women went to the tomb of Jesus intending to anoint the dead body of Jesus. Instead, they found the tomb was empty, but there was an angel standing there. And the angel said to the women on Easter morning, the angel said, why do you seek Jesus of Nazareth here? He is not here. He is risen. He is, he is risen from the dead. And the women heard the message from an angel himself. Interesting. Now, angels in the scriptures are described as protectors. Angels are sometimes warriors. Angels are sometimes comforting people. They comfort those who are sick or in desperate circumstances. But the number one function of angels, according to the Bible, is to be messengers of God, delivering God's will to the people, announcing God's purpose to the people, announcing what God is about to do among God's people here on earth. Now, here's a trivia question. There are 58 direct quotes in the Bible 
from angels. In other words, we, we directly have quotes from angels on what they said. What do angels usually say when they show up? Ruth Ann knows. Fear not. Fear not. You got the Jeopardy question. That's exactly what they say. The first thing that angels say is fear not or do not be afraid. And that makes a lot of sense. Because let's say you're home having dinner, you're sitting at your kitchen table, and an angel shows up at your kitchen table. Are you going to be okay with that or are you going to be afraid? It's like seeing a ghost, you know? So everybody who saw angels were like, what? And the, the first thing the angel said, fear not. Fear, the, the angel said that to Mary too. Don't be afraid. God is with you. And I have good news for you. That's what the angels say. Fear not. I think that's very, very interesting, the way they, they bring that news. And by the way, somebody once said, how many angels are there? Well, that's impossible to determine. However, there is a Bible verse in Hebrews 12, 27. It says that there are legions upon legions of angels. That means there are thousands and thousands and thousands of angels created by God. And let me be clear about this. Some people think that angels are spirits of the deceased. That's not what the, the Bible says. The Bible says that angels are created beings. They're not the souls of human beings who died. They are created beings. And we're to know that the angels were created even before the creation of the heavens and the earth. So God created this legion, the thousands and thousands of angels up there, even before the creation began. Now, who's the most famous angel? Another trivia question. You could argue this one. And Ruth Ann, you're not allowed to answer because you already got the first one. But who's the most famous angel? You might say Michael because he's the captain of the angels. Gabriel. Gabriel. You could, somebody said that. You could say that, but there's somebody even more famous than Gabriel or Michael as an angel. Satan. Ooh, trick question. The Bible tells us that at one time, Satan was the prettiest of all the angels, the most handsome of all the angels, the smartest of all the angels, the strongest of all the angels. And at one time, Satan was so filled with pride. You see, he knew he was special. He knew he had qualities that the other angels didn't have. So one day, he actually had the nerve to challenge God for the authority of the heavenly kingdom. Satan said, I know more than God. I am better than God. I can rule this place better. So Satan actually challenged God for the throne. What do you think happened? God kicked him out real quick. God said to Satan, the greatest of all the angels, he said, you, you are filled with pride and selfishness. All you care about is yourself. And in our scripture verse that's assigned for today in the New Testament, there was a conflict, listen to this, war broke out. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon is another name for Satan. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated. There was no longer any place for them in heaven. So the Bible says, and Jesus says it in our gospel lesson, Jesus says that Satan was cast out of the heavenly kingdom and he took some angels with him. And those angels we commonly we call demons today. Demons. Satan's personal angels. So now we have angels and demons. Great title for a novel, right? <laughs> angels and demons. Let's look at Michael. Because Michael is considered the captain, the leader of the angels, as I mentioned to the children. He's in charge of all the angels. Now, here's an interesting factoid for you. There are three major religions in the world today. There's Christianity, there's Judaism, and there's the Muslim faith. Did you know that Michael 
is the only angel mentioned by name in the scriptures of those three major religions. No other angel appears in all three religions than Michael, who is designated the captain, the warrior of all the angels. I think that's really cool. And the warrior of the angels is God's fighter. God, God chooses Michael to fight the demons wherever they may appear. Now, what, what can we learn? We learn these. And if you look up on the monitor, we learn this from the Bible. God is more powerful than Satan. And it's recorded in the scriptures. God's messengers, angels, are more powerful than Satan's messengers, the demons. And we all know that Michael, God's warrior, is stronger than the devil because the Bible describes the conflict and who won the conflict? Michael did. Michael is even stronger than Satan. So what does the Bible say? The Bible says if you have God on your side, you also have the holy angels on your side. That's a good thing to keep in mind. And by the way, my, um, my, my third child has a necklace that's hanging from the rear view mirror of his car. And on this necklace, it says, don't drive any faster than your guardian angel can fly. I really like that one. So we return to the question, do angels exist here? Are there angels in your neighborhood? Are there angels around you right now? Are there angels? Well, I have a few stories to share, and you can make up your own mind on this. I heard a story years ago about a guy who was working in Manhattan. He lived in New Jersey, but he was working in Manhattan, and he had a very weird shift. He started working at 7 p.m. and ended his shift at 3 a.m. That's a weird shift, don't you think? 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. Well, one night, it was a hot summer night, and he's leaving his work in Manhattan at a little after 3 o'clock in the morning. He, goes, he gets into his car, and he's about to go through the Holland Tunnel. Now, those of you who have been through the Holland Tunnel, you may recall that the Holland Tunnel has a few curves along the way. It's not just a straight shot. It curves a little bit this way. It curves a little bit that way. That's the Holland Tunnel. Well, now, let's say it's 3.30 in the morning. This guy is driving through the Holland Tunnel. There isn't anybody on the road. It was completely desolate. No cars were going through the Holland Tunnel at that particular time on a hot summer night. He's, he said he was driving 70 miles an hour because nobody was around. And as he's driving, all of a sudden, a voice whispered into his left ear, a voice that said, change to the left lane. Just as clear as I'm speaking it to you. A voice, an audible voice said, change to the left lane. And for a second he thought, why do I need to change over to the left lane? I'm in the right lane, nobody's here. But something told him to move to the left lane, and he did. He switched to the left lane. A few seconds later, he went around the bend, and there was a disabled truck with its flashers on in the right lane where he was. If he didn't switch to the left lane at that moment, he would have plowed right in to the back of that disabled truck, and he would have perished instantly. My question to you is, who was the one that was whispering into his ear to go into the left lane? Could it have been an angel delivering life-saving information? No one will know, but this man swears to this day that he heard a voice to go to the other lane and that saved his life. Years ago, I was in New Brunswick, New Jersey, summer day, and my car broke down on a road just outside of New Brunswick. Now, do you remember the days years ago when cars used to overheat and you saw the steam 
coming up from the hood and all that. You don't see that very often today, but I'm talking about this was years ago. All of a sudden, my car is overheating, and there's, there's steam coming up from the hood, and I, I, oh, holy cow, what's going on? I, I pulled to the side of the road. Now, the, this was so long ago, th this was before cell phones were invented. Can you imagine a day before cell phones were invented? So now the car is steaming, and I don't know why. I open the hood, and I look at it as if I'm able to do something. But I look at it, and I see there's a radiator hose that's split in, in half, and there's steam and antifreeze going all over the place. So now I don't have a cell phone because this is before the days of cell phones. And I'm thinking, I have to walk to the nearest pay phone. Who remembers what pay phones are, right? So I'm thinking, I got to go to a pay phone and call for help, or if there's a gas station along the way, I'll stop at a gas station. So I'm still there, like scratching my head. I'm kind of getting irritated because it's like 150 degrees out and I'm hot and sweaty, and now I have to figure out what to do. Just then, as if on cue, a guy pulls up driving a Volkswagen van. Now, here's another blast from the past. You remember those? Volkswagen vans, was it Scooby-Doo? Did they have one of those? Or, anyway, it was one of those Volkswagen. And the guy says, you need help? I said, boy, do I need help. He says, get in. There's a gas station down the road. I'll take you to the gas station. I get in his car, and I notice his appearance. This guy has long hair. He's got a beard. He's got wire rim glasses, the round wire rim glasses, but the thing that stood out was his eyes. His eyes were this bright blue. I've never seen eyes like this on a human being. It was almost like turquoise. Eyes are bright blue and they're wide. And I thought, how odd. He drives me to the gas station just a couple minutes away. I thanked him a lot. I said, oh, gee, thanks a lot. You really saved the day. And he looks at me with these wide blue eyes, and he goes, he goes, God will take care of you. I didn't tell him I was a pastor. I didn't say anything about religion. But here's this guy with eyes like saucers, wide turquoise, saying, God will take care of you. I'm like, thanks, man. And God took care of me. I think I met an angel that day. Some of you will be skeptical. That, oh, he wasn't an angel. He was just a hippie from the 60s. Yeah, maybe. But those eyes. And why did he say God will take care of you? Why did he bring up God? I think I had an angel visit me that day. Don't be surprised if you run into an angel in your life. Sometimes angels look like emergency room nurses. Sometimes angels look like the guy who's driving the tow truck to help you at 3 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes angels are like the old lady who lives next to you who knocks on your door and says, here's a fresh apple pie that I just made. I want you to have it. There are angels all around. There are angels in the supermarket. There are angels on the highways. You just need to look for them. Look for your angel. Right now, you might be thinking, I really need an angel. My life is a mess. Things aren't going the way I want them to. If there's any time I need an angel, Lord, hey, it's right now. Well, don't be surprised because the next time you turn around, God may place an angel right there for you to guide you, to comfort you, to give you hope, and to say directly to you, just like that angel said to me, God will take care of you. Look for your angel. You'll see your angel. And I say thanks be to God. Amen.
And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.